Father Simon, I'm writing for forgiveness on what I thought was an innocent little giggle, but which actually turned out to be a very dastardly deed indeed. I was driving home from Northampton on a Sunday morning, having been to a fabulous book launch by my favourite author. It was a night to remember, full of laughter, meeting old book friends and making new ones. I was feeling a tad tired and had caffeine withdrawal, so I thought it sensible to take a break at a service station on the M6. Immediate brownie boys there for me. Depends which one. <laughs> oh, does it? OK. Yeah. In my desperate need for caffeine, I hastily grabbed my trusty mobile from its cradle and chucked it into my oversized handbag. I then dragged my tired self out of the car and I wandered into the service station, the craving so bad now my brain felt as, it were, as if it were misfiring. I inhaled the delicious aroma of coffee and followed the scent like the Bisto kid and like a true Brit stood in line awaiting my turn at the coffee counter. Now stood in front of me in line was a young woman with her small child. I think he was a boy from the massive blonde curls the little darling had. I'd say his age was about four tops. As his mother was placing her order, I looked down to the little boy and he was looking up at me with an incredibly shy expression on his face which I smiled politely. Just then I heard an extremely posh but very muffled lady's voice saying, at the next roundabout, turn right, <laughs> then go straight on. The little boy's eyes darted straight at me, then to my oversized handbag. He clearly had no idea that in my haste for a caffeine fix, I'd forgotten to turn off the satellite navigation app on my phone. Now, the right, the right thing to do would have been to take my phone out of the bag and show it to the little boy, satisfying his curiosity. But that's not what happened. Instead, I looked at the boy and said in a whispered tone, <laughs> I have a woman's head in my bag. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I must have sounded like the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> As the little boy's face began to crumple, his bottom lip protruded, his eyes became glassy and he began to let out this almighty wail. <clears throat> Realising how catastrophically I'd misjudged this, I immediately really? turned my head away from the situation and looked to the counter as if I'd done nothing wrong whatsoever. Her mother was on her knees trying to console her, his terrified little heart and I could see from the corner of my eye that he was sobbing and he was pointing at me. Clearly the little horror was trying to wrap me out, but I kept my cool, maintaining a straight face and a look of complete lack of interest in the commotion beside me. As no one else witnessed this dastardly deed or heard me utter the line, I have a woman's <laughs> head in my bag, my, yeah. I, I ordered my coffee, found a quiet spot to sit and began to titter to myself on getting away with it. On reflection, I feel shame for traumatising the little darling and I'm writing to, your fa writing to you, Father Simon, for forgiveness. I don't think Tracy's... I don't think <laughs> Tracy has an iota of regret at all, if that's the unit of regret. Um, Tracy, thank you very much indeed. And it, has, it had, had a punchline in it. That's what I was looking for. And you can see how... You can see that it could have been funny, but not if you're four. Sister Bobby, what well, do you my, say? Well, my big laughs are absolutely for shock. Because I think the incongruousness of the situation, look, we're at a service station and you have to weave as much magic into that as possibly can. So that I admire, I love that bit. I thought this is going to be brilliant. I was so surprised actually by your explanation of your talking bag. But also, no, you are not forgiven. That is not what you tell a small child. You can tell them anything. You can tell them you've got a talking teddy, you've got a talking bag. I'm not, I'm not saying that I you can't lie. I have a woman's lie. head in my bag. <laughs> Yeah, Having in that said voice. that, there's a part of me that's also really impressed. But um, you are. It's the I'm kind of thing. It obviously just came to Tracy. It was just an instant thing. It was just on the spur of the moment. She yeah. thought it would be absolutely yeah. fine. I said unforgotten. Why men is unforgiven. Completely unforgotten. <laughs> and unforgiven. Uh, Brother um, Matthew. Well, I think we are forgetting the mitigating factor here that Tracy needed a coffee. And I know uh, that unless I get a coffee in the morning, I am not a pleasant person to be around. Really? Uh, imagine that, imagine that. Um, so I'm going to say I'm edging towards forgiveness. I mean, obviously, I'd have probably gone with I've got a little woman living in my bag. That would have been OK. <laughs> Uh, because because you know, the four year old's going to go, oh, how, how very charming. Um, but uh, I've got a woman's head in my bag. 
That's no one's finding that funny. Uh, so, uh, but I am going to forgive because you know we all need our caffeine fix.